Hello and welcome to the Bluff Sports Zone. I'm Craig Carlson. An update on iWestern Athletics coming your way shortly, but Thomas Jefferson Soccer in our starting lineup. The Yellow Jacket girls taking on Sioux City West. The guys squaring off against Riverside. IWTV student Scott Stover has highlights from both contests on April 17th. A wonderful day for soccer as Thomas Jefferson faces Riverside needing a win to be at 500 on the season. Midway through the first half, no score, the Yellow Jackets threatening, but the shot gets tipped off the crossbar and bounces out. Go up, go up. That doesn't stop the attempts though, moments later a corner kick bounces around by the goal until getting cleared by Riverside's Brady Ryan. As the half runs down, Ryan gets a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, but doesn't get a hold of it and Anthony Avalos dives on the ball for the easy save. The game still scoreless, but not lacking entertainment, Chris MG with an acrobatic throw-in. And if that's not entertaining, maybe this is. The Jackets offense gets rolling late first half. Small freshman Jake Sotek kicks around the defender to put in the first goal of the game. TJ up 1-0. At the half, the Bulldogs trying to straighten things out for the final 40 minutes. And it shows early. Sotek comes through with a beautiful bicycle kick. But David Anderson saves the bullet and keeps the score at one zip. But later, Thomas Jefferson extends the lead. Swotek puts in another. His first two goals of the season give his team a 2-0 lead. Swotek's team getting involved after that. Alan Rodriguez with a nice placement for the third Yellow Jacket goal of the night. And TJ goes on to win 4-0 and improved at 3-3 on the season. I told the, the guys, uh, um, I said, you know, when, you, when you're more worried, you know your, your team is in trouble. When you're more worried about being cute than playing the game. You know, when you're more more worried about impressing the fans than playing the game out here on the field, then uh, you know your team's in trouble. And uh, it looks like tonight the guys uh, may have listened to a little bit of that and uh, came out and played the game and, and uh, got it done. So uh, pretty proud of the guys. Right next door, Thomas Jefferson girls not having such an easy time with Sioux City West. The Wolverines on the attack, Trisha Grenada gets an open look, but Trisha Brown dives on the ball before the strike, and the contest heads into overtime tied at one. With time winding down in the extra period, Grenada gets another shot, but this one sails wide right as the two teams head into overtime number two. With just over three minutes remaining, TJ's Hannah Clark sees an opening and looking for the winning goal, but it sails high. The Yellow Jackets though, ready to go home. One minute later, teammate Allison Arnold kicks it from 15 feet outside the center circle and it bounces over Silvio Turquit and into the goal. TJ wins at home 2-1 and improves to 5-3 on the season. These kids just have something inside of them that just they make them fight and try to do what it takes. You know, and look, we have a motto every year. We make t-shirts and we talk about ugly, winning ugly and all this stuff. Well, that was winning ugly. You know, like, like I tell them, it doesn't matter how it goes in, how pretty it was. How bad it was, ugly's fine, and that was ugly. We'll take it, we'll run, we'll take the W and get the heck out of town. Despite flying under the radar, TJ's happy with their recent success. I mean, win three in a row against competition we're playing right now is phenomenal. I mean, that's you know eight games against, uh, I believe, one, two, about five ranked teams we've played out of eight games. That's pretty nasty, and our next three are ranked. We have Glenwood, Lewis Central, and uh, Sioux City Healing, all in the top seven in the state in their class. You know, this doesn't get any easier, and it, this is talk about nasty coming. It's coming starting next week, next Tuesday, Glenwood. It's just going to be brutal, and then Thursday, say uh, Lewis Central, then Healing the next Tuesday. So it's good to get the win, but we got to play a lot better than this if we want to compete with any of those three. Doesn't matter the sport or the team's records. Lewis Central and St. Albert, for the most part, just don't like one another. Of course, the trash talk heightened when both teams are ranked in the state's top 10. On April 19th, LC ranked 8th in Class 2A in girls soccer, hosting 1A number 4 St. Albert at Iowa Western. Wind, rain, and cold temperatures making miserable conditions for this rivalry showdown, but early on, not affecting Lewis Central's offensive pressure. Four minutes in, Emma Ford's shot batted away by St. Albert's Katie Cook. Then in the 14th minute, the state's second leading scorer, LC's Brooke Jensen, fighting for some space to fire away, 
the Saints defense smothering and Cook makes the easy stop. Despite LC dominating time of possession in the first 19 minutes of the game, St. Albert the first on the board as Felicia Ropey takes the Saints' first shot on goal of the game. Taylor Coulter misplays the bounce, and St. Albert takes a 1-0 lead off Ropey's first goal of the season. The Titans' attack doesn't slow down. In the 25th minute, Ali Larkin with a hard grounder, but Cook again there for the stop. And once again, although the attempts are limited on the other end, the Saints taking advantage of them. In the 31st minute, Faye Osman puts in her fifth goal of the season. Saints up two zip, but leading scorer Ali Cox, who underwent hip surgery last summer, injured on the play and done for the game. And up by two in the second half with their leading scorer out, the Saints defense packs it in. In the 60th minute, Jensen's shot forced wide right but her silence only lasting 20 seconds more. The junior grabs her 15th goal of the season with the header to put the Titans on the board down 2-1. And with the breath of life, LC players suddenly firing shots from everywhere. And some decent looks at that, but despite outshooting their crosstown rival 33-4, class 2A number eight Lewis Central falls to 1A number four St. Albert, 2-1 to one, to give the Saints the bragging rights. From what I understand, there was a little talking going on on Facebook, and uh, fortunately, I think I went out on it and looked at it last night. I think our girls pretty much stayed out of it, but uh, when we just kept telling them, you know, wait till the game's over, then see who can talk. So. Well, we've been on and off for a couple of years. Like Davey does last year in a shootout, so it's and they're always a really tough, competitive, like really good team. So we're kind of at the same level, and it's they're right there across the. <laughs> across the street, so we like it, it's fun. It feels awesome. We were thinking about the game the whole time, and I transferred from Omaha, and the competition was just so good, and I was just waiting for this game, you know, to show what I could do and everything. Although the LC offense relentless in their attack, the Saints' D continues to impress this season, led by goalkeeper Katie Cook. I personally right now think Katie, Katie Cook's probably, if not the best, one of the best in the state, in the state in any class. Um, she is, well, and a lot of that's attributed to Bob, uh, has come on strong over the last year. And then we've got a great with the two mongers in the middle and Nevada on the outside. Unfortunately, we had to kind of switch things around a little bit with Jen Ruby being out um, and uh, move Jenny Daly, but that, that defense, I just about put it up against anybody. Our defense has been completely awesome through this whole entire season. I cannot thank them enough. They've saved my butt so many times. But yeah, through the second half, we knew that they were going to come push back harder, so we needed to push back even harder than that. But we came out. It was good. Don't change it. After the break, the region-leading Iowa Western softball team taking on D-Mac. Highlights coming up. And a look at the nation's top-ranked baseball team. They don't talk about being number one in the country. Um, they go out and they work at their skills. Whether you're a weekend warrior or on an organized sports team, however you play, you risk injury. At Flex Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, we specialize in the prevention, recognition, treatment, and rehab of orthopedic and sports injuries. We have 30 combined years of experience, making us Southwest Iowa's leading physical therapy clinic. At our state-of-the-art facility and using the latest technology, we'll help you get back on the field fast. So if you experience a sports injury, you need to see us first. Flex Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your Southwest Iowa's sports medicine professionals. What does the future hold for you? I can learn. I can lead. I can play. I can grow. Put yourself in a great place. Iowa Western. Classes are forming now in more than 80 areas of study. Learn more, a lot more at iwcc.edu. I can succeed. Hi, how are you doing today? Uh, what looks good? Our special today is shrimp scampi. It's been sitting around for about a week. Excuse me, what time are you guys leaving? We're gonna rob your house tonight. Don't you wish there were warnings to protect you from life's risks? With diabetes, there is one. It's called A1C, a simple blood test that helps measure your risk of a heart attack and other complications. Learn more at diabetesa1c.org. 
If green and gold never gets old, then St. Albert Sports Fan is the place for you. Updated daily, it's loaded with articles, archives, and so much more. And if you can't make the game, you can still watch it live from the comfort of your own computer. St. Albert Sports Fan, the homepage for the home team. This portion of the Bluff Sports Zone, brought to you by Cutler O'Neill, Meyer Woodring, family-owned funeral home, serving Council Bluffs in Southwest Iowa for over 100 years. Underhead coach Mark Raritan, Iowa Western's baseball team, has put itself among the elite programs in the country. His teams have won a ridiculous 88% of their games in conference play and have tripped to Grand Junction, Colorado and the Junior College World Series each of the past five seasons. The Reavers are currently ranked number one in the country and, according to Raritan, have more talent on the roster than ever before. In 2010, the Iowa Western baseball team won the Junior College World Series. That win raised expectations, and despite sporting just one loss on the year, the Reavers are feeling no pressure. They don't talk about being number one in the country. Um, they go out and they work at their skills, and they try to get better, and they can just continue to try to win games. Um, I mean, it's basically the same every day. We come into the game thinking we have to win, um, so we try and put out a great effort every single game, um, play with no regrets. There's not much the Reavers can regret. Going into a weekend series at Muscatine on April 21st, Iowa Western carried a 21-game win streak and a 38-1 record. To do something like what we have, it's been something amazing to be a part of. Um, it's just been a great all-around experience. After qualifying for five straight JUCO World Series and six of the last seven, Iowa Western's lineup, no question, is loaded with some of the top talent in the country. But that alone doesn't guarantee success. Maybe a lot of times we'll, we can outskill the other team, but we also have to outwill them, which means just don't show up. Show up and play, and then the other team doesn't have a chance. Most opposing pitchers facing the Iowa Western batting order haven't had much of a chance. The Reavers lead the nation with a 431 batting average. Hitters are protected by a pitching staff with a combined ERA of 3.3 providing a potent combination developed by outworking every junior college program in the country. We've been performing really well lately, so it's been really good. I mean, we had a great work ethic in the fall. Um, we worked really hard with that, so that's been paying off, as you can see. Kids and programs will do amazing things and work at a high level when wins come. The Reavers adding to the win total with a four-game sweep of Muscatine over the weekend. The wins extend Iowa Western's streak to 25 games, creeping up on the school record of 31. Iowa Western clinches the regular season region title and the number one seed for the region tournament, sporting a 23-1 record in conference play. They close out a 14-game stretch played on the road at Southwestern on Wednesday, April 25th, carrying a 42-1 record into the doubleheader. Expectations also high for Iowa Western's softball team. The Reavers fresh off a seventh place national finish in 2011 and holding their own so far in 2012. They entered an April 22nd doubleheader against Des Moines Area Community College, ranked number 20 in the country. Here's IWTV student Jim Brinklow with the highlights. After an 8-2 loss to DMAC in game one of a doubleheader, the Reavers softball team starting fast in game two. Bottom one, two players in scoring position, Taylor Jonas steps up to bat. Her hit brings both teammates home for 46th and 47th RBI this season. Nia Western gets on the board first, two to zip. Things stay quiet until the bottom of the fourth, where Brianna Canova places the ball right in front of the Bears' Paige Osterberg. And Jocelyn Sakaguchi rounds third, giving the home team a three-run lead. Moments later, two on base again. This time, it's Jordan Kearns. She gets the ball deep to center field. Plenty of room for the runners to get to home plate. Reavers now enjoying a five-run lead. IWCC batters are taking a liking to center field. Later in the same inning, Becca Sanchez brings home Kearns, adding to the total six to nothing IW. Then the Reavers with two down, but not done yet. Kaylee Simpson puts the ball out of the first baseman's reach. Nia Western puts up five runs in the fourth inning, taking a very comfortable lead, seven to nothing. But wait. Hold the victory dance back for just a moment because in the sixth frame, D Max starts to heat up. Allie Minus sacrifice fly brings home Osterberg for a little momentum shift. Reaver pitcher Kylie Posley just two hits given up through the first five frames. The bear batting order starting to catch up. Carly Grunder connects with the ball 
and it goes deep left field. She brings home not one, but two of her teammates making the score 7-3. Still down by four, Kylie Raby continues to rally with the RBI single, and Da Bears finish the top of the six with four runs. Even the Reavers a bit of a scare. But bottom of the same inning, Kaylin Thompson hits the ball straight to the pitcher. But there on third allows another run across the plate. High Western back up by four. Reavers close game two strong to win 10-5 and improve to 44-16 on the season. The region leaders have four games remaining in the regular season for starting regionals April 28th in Burlington, Iowa. You know, i got to tell you, I mean, we've played 50 some odd games and um, definitely, you know, I think that we're tired. Uh, we got a big weekend coming up, um, and the girls know it. You know, DMAC has a great number one who uh, who throws well. I mean, she beat us at their place as well. Ah, uh, yeah, I think I just got a little tired after all the, all the games, but um, I know I'm going to get better regional tournament, uh, and especially on Tuesday. It's just a battle every single day. You come out, and it, it's a battle, and depends, you know, at this level, depends who's going to want it more. We return our weekly spring practice report. Hear why sophomore running back Aaron Wimberly sets the bar high. We'll be right back. No team covers Southwest Iowa sports like the team at Jenny Edmondson Sports Medicine. For nearly 25 years, Jenny Ed Sports Med certified athletic trainers have cared for thousands of area athletes and their schools. And our partnering physicians at Nebraska Orthopedics help ensure you're taken care of from diagnosis through rehab. If you need to be seen now, come by our Saturday morning walk-in clinic. It's open all fall from 8 to 9.30 a.m. Jenny Edmondson Sports Medicine. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Lynx fans can now log on to alsportsfan.com for archived and live broadcasts, team info, pictures, and more. alsportsfan.com, part of the cbsportsfan.com family. Well, over the last few weeks of spring practice, you've heard us talk about the unbelievable talent the Iowa Western football team has. To be successful, however, there also must be leadership. IWTV student Jim Brinklow tells us how sophomore running back Aaron Wimberly is trying to step into that role. Nearly 900 yards rushing, That's nice. 10 rushing touchdowns, and an average of 5 yards a carry. These are the 2011 stats of Reaver running back Aaron Wimberly. Coming back with all that experience, it really helps us. It allows me uh, to focus on some other guys, getting them ready, because I feel comfortable with what he can do already. Um, I accomplished a lot. Um, I think I could have did a lot better. But um, basically as a team, we accomplished a lot, so that helped me my stats up. Help my, steps, my stats be a lot higher. Last season, Wimberly helped the Rivers to a 9-2 record and a win in the Graphic Edge Bowl. Nice run by Aaron Wimberly. The Snellville, Georgia native was honored as an All-American, which still leaves the sophomore speechless. Um, I mean, uh, a lot went through my head. I, I was surprised. I mean, it was just a big, big award for me. I mean, I really loved it. As a veteran in the backfield, Wimberly is the leading candidate to start in at running back in 2012. But he's taking an unselfish approach. You know, watching Aaron play all last season, you know, it kind of, you know, set the bar real high. You know, coming as a red shirt, you know, I'm just going to follow his, you know, his lead. Just pick up where he's going. Um, basically, they're, they're newcomers, so you want to help them out as much as you can. Make them learn faster than the people that's coming in um, before them. In addition to the threat he brings in the running game, Wimberly is also a major threat catching the ball. In 2011, he finished with 356 receiving yards and four scores. His production is a direct result of his relentless work ethic. Uh, you know, he definitely deserved everything he got. He worked hard for everything. Uh, really was one of the leaders on our offense, uh, him and Jake, and was why we were so successful last year. He's not one to uh, be negative. He's not one. He's going to 
help the other guys to be, become the best players they can be, which is what you want. I mean, you want a leader. Uh, you want a guy who's going to help everyone on top of, you know, be a, be a great player. Wimberley's career at IWCC isn't finished yet. He still has one goal to achieve. I'm just going to work harder, you know, pick the tempo up, um, push my team, get better, and uh, basically just go out this national championship. Wimberley can be seen during the Reavers spring game Saturday, April 28th at Trainer High School. As Titan Stadium is getting artificial turf put in, game time is set for 2 p.m. The Bluff Sports Zone, I'm Jim Brinklow. That wraps up this week's broadcast. Remember, you can catch our programming online as well at CBTV17.com. Until next time, we're out.